Hey y'all, it's Tammy and Chris. Friday morning Bible study. Um, we're going to talk about uh, using profane language today, whether or not it's a sin. Because we had talked about that one day earlier, and um, I was telling y'all that I shouldn't be saying curse, curse words. I'm trying to fix the lighting. I'm always trying to fix the lighting on these things. There we go. That's better. Well, this natural sun is our light today, and I'm closer to it, so I'm brighter than Chris. Um, anyway, we want to talk about that subject because I've slipped up and said a few lately, and then I, I used a few words that were mama lives that I shouldn't have used. That was out of anger, and it was definitely a sin for sure. But um, we're going to talk about it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to bring up a verse from Ephesians, and I'm going to read it. Um, and then we're going to talk about it and what the words mean in, in the verse, okay? So, um, we were prepared to do this about 1030 and had to wait 30 minutes. So, <coughs> I had the screen on my computer diff different. Okay, this is the verse we're going to start with, and it says, Ephesians 4, verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, if you were a Christian, this is to the church, so this is for you, okay? And uh, if, if that's pretty much self-explanatory to me. Let no corrupt communication. So if we look up the word corrupt, we can use the tools on the Blue Letter Bible to study a verse. And if you uh, click the inter... How do you say that? Interlinear. It's a concordance. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask Chris if he's going to help us because he's really good. If he will please use his outward voice as if he were talking to a crowd of kids because he's always so soft-spoken uh, because I don't have a good speaker on this device. Um, so when we look at that area and you click corrupt and you look at what the word corrupt means it means rotten putrefied corrupt by one and no longer fit to use worn out of poor quality bad unfit for use worthless so that's what corrupt means that word according to this is used seven times in the King James Version, and it's used one time as bad, uh, the bad meaning. The, the rest of the time, it all is used with the same meaning seven times. Okay. Now, if we're going to read, I think it would be good for us. To, we're going to do a lot of reading today, okay? So we're going to read about what corrupt is. Okay, because he's telling us not, not to use corrupt communication. So, we looked up the uh, definition, and now I'm going to talk about some places that same word with its same definition is used in the Bible. It is Matthew 7, 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Matthew 7, 18, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. 12, Matthew 12, 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the, corrupt, the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. Okay, Matthew 13, 48. Which, when it is full, they drove to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but they cast the bad away. That was the one time it was used uh, as a different word meaning. This is the last time 
the word corrupt. It says what we just read, Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So that word corrupt is mostly used in the, about the fruit and the trees, and we know that's in reference to us and whether or not we as Christians bear our good fruit or bear corrupt fruit, um, and that we are known by our fruit, okay? So keep that in mind. Now we're going to go back, if I can, And we're going to look at the word communication. Now, communication is used 218 times. 50 times it was a saying, 8 times account, 8 times speech, 7 times word, Christ's word, 5 times a thing, Two times it was not translated, and two, 32 times it's miscellaneous. So, what? Uh, of course, we all know what communication means. But I'll read the definition. And, of course, we're not going to go back and read all those verses. It says, of speech, a word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception or idea. What someone has said, a word, the sayings of God, decree, mandate, or order, uh, Old Testament prophecy given by the prophets, what is declared, a thought, declaration, a, way, a weighty st saying. Um, and then that's, that's the speech part, and then there's a discourse part that says uh, it's the act of speaking or speech, uh, a kind of style of speaking. It is used as respect to the mind alone. Um, it says reason, the mental f faculty of thinking, meditating, reasoning, and calculating. So that's what communication means. So they're telling us, or uh, Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, and he's telling us that, um, I'm trying to find my place back. Sorry. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouth. We know what our mouth is. It says, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Okay. Now we're going to talk about what edifying means. Edifying means the act of building, building up, uh, the act of one who promotes another's growth in Christian wisdom, piety, happiness, and holiness. Okay? So, that's what the edifying means. Okay? It says that, that it, it, our conversations, should minister grace unto the hearers. Now, um, I'm going to let Chris talk a little bit about the whole chapter and what it was written about, what it's for, because there's a lot of verses in here about our speech, um, and it does fall in line with cursing, or, um, and we'll talk about in general what we think cursing is, some, uh, et cetera, but let me just let him hit the highlights on what he has to say first. Chris? All right. Um, let me get to the... Ephesians 4. Oh. Okay. Um, one of the things, like a lot of people use the word, like they'll say uh, the word profanity, um, or you'll hear the word cursing. Uh, those are two things that you hear when people talk about, um, you know, sinning with their uh, their words the things that they say uh, the word profane uh, if you look back in the old testament the word profane is used a lot of times and the word profane usually means 
um, something that has to do with making something unclean, either like in um, like in worship, like the Jewish rituals. If they didn't handle the things the right way, they profaned it. Uh, or it had to do with some type of sexual type sin. Uh, for example, if a woman became a harlot, she was profaning herself. Uh, so usually when we hear the word profanity, uh, that is referring to some type of word that is a bad word that has to do with a sexual type meaning. Uh, the word curse, if you go back and look up the word curse and you start back in the Old Testament, uh, it's used a lot. Um, and typically it has to do with God cursing something. And basically what the word curse means is to make something useless. Uh, but it has to do with making it use, useless by cursing, by making a statement that makes it useless. Like when God cursed the ground, uh, or when God would curse a person, uh, the opposite of that, I guess the easiest way to think of it is when God would bless something. He would make it worth something or make it, um, you know, where it would be very productive, that kind of thing, like when God would bless Israel, you know. Uh, but anyway, a curse is the opposite. Now, we really, in our um, ability, cannot curse something. We cannot make it useless. But I think when it uses the word, when we use the word cursing, uh, what we are saying is we are saying things where we are attempting to curse. Uh, to me, the best definition of a curse word, um, or the easiest way to understand a curse, would be when you use the word damn. Uh, like when you are, that means you are damning something, or you are, um, like that, that in itself is a curse. Um, so that would be a bad word because uh, you're using it to put a curse on something, even though you can't curse it your, yourself. You can't damn something. Um, but uh, that would be an example of that word. Now, that's kind of how the Old Testament handles it. You, use, you know, they're, they weren't supposed to use profane uh, words or use curse words. They, not, they weren't supposed to use idle uh, or vain swearing uh, words or to swear to God in a vain way or use God's name in a vain way. Um, the word vain means to use it in a useless way. Uh, or use it in a way that where you're just being very, um, like I'm just using this word and it's really not a bad word, but it really does have a bad meaning. That's using it in a vain way. Uh, but to me, this chapter, I was telling Tammy, this chapter of Ephesians spells it out so well, you really don't need anything else to tell you whether what you're saying is good or bad. So, the Old Testament goes through and it talks about profanity and curses and swearing. But you get to the New Testament and Paul really makes it even, it, he takes it up a notch. I'll put it that way. Because Paul comes in and he talks in Ephesians 4 and he's speaking to people, to the church, and he's giving them some general direction in this chapter. And he starts saying that if you are a believer, like back in verse 23, um, or let's go back to verse 422. It says, put off uh, concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which is after, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And then he starts giving us some direction. And he says, put away lying. Um, speak the truth. Speak every man the truth. Uh, then he goes in to verse 26 and he says, be angry and sin not. In other words, you can get angry, but you shouldn't sin. Uh, in other words, you shouldn't act on that anger or say things out of anger. It says, let not the sun go down on your wrath. Uh, a lot of people take that verse to mean that, well, if I'm mad, if I'm mad at Tammy, then that means before the sun goes down, I need to have it out with her. I need to let her know that I'm angry. That's not what that, that means you need to get over it not let her have it. Um, neither give place to the devil. Uh, he, let he who stole still no more. All right, then we get down to the corrupt communication. He says, let no rotten communication, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Only say things that are good. Um, so that, if it's bad at all, 
It doesn't matter whether it's profanity, cursing, if it's meant to harm somebody or meant to be mean. Let none of that at all proceed out of your mouth. And then, he, then in case you don't understand that, he says, here's what you say. Say things that are good, that edify people, and that minister grace. And then he goes down in the next verse, and he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. In other words, you know this is bad, so don't do it, because if you do it, it's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. And then he goes on, and he gets even more detailed in verse 31, and he says, let all bitterness and bitterness is like uh, hatred. So he says you, you shouldn't hate or be bitter. Uh, he uses the word wrath. Uh, the word, he says, let all bitterness and wrath. Wrath means like passionate anger. Like um, something happened and I get so upset because I'm so impassioned about this that I use, I, I say things that are curse words or profane words or I uh, speak in a way that's wrathful. So you're not supposed to have wrath. Uh, anger. Anger is like just your general, like some people just have, a, uh, they're easy to anger. They, they are, uh, what's a good word for that? Disposition. They, yeah, they have a, a disposition where, you know, they're like, well, that's just the way I am. I get mad easy. I get, you know, uh, he says, well, you can't, do that. You can't be a person that has a bad disposition and just, just blame it on your disposition. So it can't be wrathful out of passion. It can't be anger because of your disposition. Clamor. Uh, clamor is just where you're loud and you're boisterous and, oh, I just can't believe, you know, and you, you make a big, you know, you're the person that's always dramatic. Dramatic, you know, you know. So he says, get rid of that. And evil speaking. Uh, and I can't remember, I'd have to go back and look at that one. Evil speaking is um, like speaking against something. Yeah, I think evil speaking is when, okay, when you're trying to slander somebody. In other words, I'm saying things because I want to hurt a person. I'm talking about somebody. Uh, like somebody's bragging on, well, brother so-and-so does, well, he's not all that. I really don't think he, you know, he's that great. That's, that's evil speaking. So in, uh, he says, you got to put all that away from you uh, and with all malice. And malice means I'm doing it on purpose to hurt somebody. Like I'm mad, so now I'm going to say something to him. I'm going to let them have it. And, and that, that's why I'm doing it. So Paul, in this chapter, I mean, if you just go through that, you don't have to worry about trying to figure out which words are okay and not okay and not have to figure out, well, is this word really a curse word? If it has bad intent, it has, if it has a bad meaning, or if it's intended uh, to hurt somebody, like I'm saying it, to get to you, um, then it's not something you should say. Uh, anything that you say, and it talks about not saying things in vain, uh, if, if I'm going to use a word that may potentially be a bad word, I'll have a reason to use it. Like I will give you the re, you know, the uh, the reason that I'm using this word, uh, and I'm not going to do it out of you know. If I do it out of anger, anything you do out of anger, you're out of you you're not in control of yourself. So uh, Paul's very clear. Uh, and you don't have to figure out which words they are. If it's, you know, if it's bad, he just says, if it's bad, you can't, you don't say it. So it's pretty clear. Well, um, I was telling him when I got mad at the woman who takes care of mommy the other day. I used some words. And one of them was, and I'll just, you know, the regular words that we typically use that we think are not bad. Because our grannies would even use them, who goes to church every Sunday, are shit, well shit, damn, and hell. Those are the three. Um, well, shit is a bad word. It has a bad meaning. Unless you're talking about the actual thing and you're using it in context that you should be using it in. If you're working on a farm and you're... <laughs> and you stepped in, can yeah. you say... You know, it, but you shouldn't be using it just around the house. You shouldn't use anything that's just 
just to use, just for no reason. I mean, there needs to be some kind of context. And if you're having to figure out whether it's okay, and you're having to justify whether it's okay, or you're not sure if it's okay, if there's something in you that says, ah, that doesn't sound right, that's the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, that's the Holy Spirit. Don't say it. I mean, because Paul, like in this verse, okay, like that, that word. All right, hang on. The verse that we were using is let me. 429. 429. He says, let, no, in other words, you, let no, in other words, you're in control of it. It, he, you like you determine what comes out of your mouth. He doesn't say it doesn't say uh, let the Holy Spirit of God control what comes out. You know, no, you. That's what when it says let the implied meaning there is you let no corrupt communication. So you're in charge of it. What comes out of your mouth, and you will answer for what comes out of your mouth. And that doesn't even get into your intent. God's going to make you answer for what you thought. And, and we know that God, you know, it says the Holy Spirit of God or the Bible is a discerner of the intents and thoughts of the heart and all this kind of thing. So we're going to even answer for what, but he, Paul gives them a direction right here. You let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So if it even seems like it might be wrong to you, you're really not supposed to say it. And this is very difficult because it covers everything. I mean, even if you're kidding around or joking around, I mean, to me, you know, I probably, it's just as bad saying the, you know, curse word uh, is saying something that it, that is intended to hurt somebody or saying something that's, you know, like you're, you know, you're trying to needle somebody or you're trying to aggravate them. Really, that's wrong. When our kids were little, and a lot of y'all have been in the same situation, I never, ever said a cuss word. Not, not in the car, not in the house, not around somebody. Uh, there was a few times I would if I got mad or I got, a, anyway. But, I mean, my kids never heard me ever say a cuss word. And as they got older, once they got into their teens, I'd say 13 and 14, then that's when my curse words started coming out. Because when you're raising a middle school kid, it is so hard in general to deal with their emotions, their thoughts, their, uh, what would you call it, Chris? Uh, their demeanor, or the way yeah. they act. Or... And that's when they, I, it was, you know, I would get upset enough that I would use a curse word. And yes, I was doing it wrong because I was upset. And let me say this, my youngest, my oldest never got on to me for it, but my youngest would say, Mama, you don't need to be cussing. You, you shouldn't say a cuss word. You cuss, no, don't cuss me. Or she would say, um, cussing is for, she thought, because she'd never been around adults that cussed. When when that happened, she thought that Kurt, that using cuss words was something for kids, like teenagers, and that it was normal for a teenager to cuss, but it was really abnormal for her mama to say anything like that. So why do you think she thought, I mean, you know what I mean? She thought it was wrong, and it was because she wasn't raised around it and didn't hear an adult say it. In other words, she said, I was too mature to and use a cuss word. be too mature. To, she mean, did that's, say that. Know, that's what she said. Even, even a kid can recognize, I mean, it, and you shouldn't have uh, expectations for a child or for a young person that, well, it's okay when you're a teenager. It's not okay. I mean, Paul didn't say it's okay if you're young or it's okay if you're a young Christian. He just said, don't do it. Uh, and he was very direct with it. And, um, you know, you want to hold people to a high standard, but a child should not be, uh, you know, subjected to that, especially from their parents. Um, and, you know, they, even a child recognizes that. I mean, I, I've taught at middle school and high school and stuff, 
And, you know, I wouldn't let them use profanity in my class. And I'd tell them, you know, that's one of my big things. You're not going to sit in here and just say whatever. I could hear every word you say. And every time you do it, you're going to get in trouble. And I did. I stood by that. And they knew I would do that. Uh, but if I had ever said anything, I mean, you let a teacher or a coach or somebody like that say one bad word. You know, the kids can sit there and cuss all day long. And then that teacher says one bad thing. And, you know, the news media is down there. Everybody's all up in arms. All the parents are calling the teacher. Or all the parents are calling the principal because the teacher said one bad thing. Well, people say bad things. Every once in a while, they you know, they let something slip or whatever. Maybe the teacher made a mistake. And, and there's like no mercy, you know, because they're in a high, they're in a position over those children. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I can understand why and it, a child should be surprised to hear an adult in their life or a teacher in their life or a leader in their life say something bad. That should you know, if they're, if they're a child and they're just used to hearing that kind of stuff all the time, that's not good because that's how they're going to speak. And a lot of children are going to speak that way anyway just because of social media or what, you know, I would say what they see on TV, but they don't watch TV. Uh, they're going to pick up that kind of stuff anyway because they're kids. Um, and they're going to do that kind of stuff. But they sure shouldn't be hearing it from their Sunday school teacher. <laughs> from their mom <laughs> yeah so i mean that's you know so i'm i'm way more guilty than chris of letting stuff come out before i think he actually thinks about everything he says most of the time before he says something i just say stuff um and i never did it when they were small and they know it's wrong and and i don't do it a whole lot it's not like i cuss them you know cuss around them all the time but when I do do it, they don't like it. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I had slipped up and said a couple of curse words on my show, um, which I used to never do. You know, I, I say stuff like uh, fruit looping and uh, crap. I'll say, what the crap? Or, you know, you try to, you know, find words that um, you can use without it being a bad word. Of course, crap is not a good word either. Um, not really, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, try to steer them away from the really bad ones. Uh, but I'm going to work on mine. And now, I know in another place in the Bible, it says, out of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And that's what I believe the, the other reference in, to the, the words earlier was about, about our fruit and whether, uh, whether or not we are, an, you know, we're going to bring forth a fruit a good fruit or an evil fruit has a lot to do with our heart. Um, well, I think that's why Paul specific, because what a lot of people will do is they'll use the excuse, well, it's in my heart, so I just might as well do it because God already knows about it. God already knows I thought something bad in my heart, so I just went ahead and said it to him. <laughs> that, that's still not, you know, that's not the excuse to go ahead. I mean, because like I said, Paul specifically said, you let no, you know, like you can do that. Even yeah. if you think it, even if you've already committed the sin and you thought something bad, don't compound it by becoming angry or wrathful and acting and saying something that's bad. That that doesn't, it doesn't justify, it being in your heart doesn't justify it coming out of your mouth. And a lot of people will take that and they'll say, well, I just can't help, uh, you know, it was in my heart, so... Uh, but God didn't tell us to do what's in our heart. No, he says our hearts yeah. are deceitfully wicked. Yeah, it doesn't say follow your heart. It says <laughs> the heart the heart is deceitfully wicked. No man can know it or, or, or you know, something. I don't know if I said that exactly yeah. right. But but I just wanted to bring the subject up today. We'll have, of course, another subject next Monday morning at 8 o'clock. And Chris usually don't get up for that one. Uh, but he's always in here on Friday, so I'll let him join in. It's nice to get a uh, perspective from somebody like Chris because he uh, has a lot better memory in retaining information than I do. Um, so I do like to hear what he has to say on the subject. Um, so anyway, we have been on here for 30 minutes, which is plenty of time for a Bible study. 
I hope if you are cursing or using profanity, even in a van, uh, even in a van way where you're not vain. really vain, I mean, vain way where you're not really directing it towards somebody or meaning for it to be mean, that you do realize that just the word in general is a bad word that we should not be using. I pray that we all, you know, take this to heart and mind so that we can be uh, a better example for our children, our grandchildren, and uh, even the adults, everyone around us. We should be an ed we should edify uh, the people that we are around and show them what is more Christ-like since we are saved, okay? So we're going to say our prayers, and I'll, I'll let Chris say the prayer on Friday, so you can dismiss us, Chris. All right. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this for this word, Lord. We thank you for what you've given us and how uh, direct it is and how easy it is to understand. Um, and we thank you for, for giving us that in a, in a Bible that we can have with us so we don't have to wonder uh, what's right or wrong, Lord, that in most cases you tell us exactly what that is. Help us to be obedient to that and to subject ourselves to, uh, to your word and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank God it's Friday, right? Um, I'm about to put together a roast on CBC Live. I'm going to do it just like Mama used to, so I'll see you guys later on CBC if you uh, would like. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you again uh, with Bible study here on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Thanks for watching, Real Southern Woman.